Welcome to the Cantina Chatter Podcast. Welcome to the Cantina Chatter Podcast. My name is Victoria, and I will be your host on this galactic adventure through Star Wars, toys and collectibles, pop culture, and randomness from the 80s and 90s. Hasbro PulseCon has come to an end, and with it, a slew of announcements, many of which had already been leaked, and uh, a few of which maybe were surprises? We'll have the lowdown for you. We're going to be breaking down all the latest announcements that were announced for Star Wars The Black Series, Star Wars The Vintage Collection, and beyond, and uh, reacting to said announcements. And to help me do that, I have on hand, of course, the handy uh, and trusty Tom Trollton. How are you doing today? I'm great, Victoria. How are you doing? I'm doing quite well. How's the air quality down there? Uh, it's improved since last time we talked. I think last time Good. we talked, I don't know if I caught you before or after the fires, but uh, yeah, there was a lot of smoke in the air. The The sun was a weird, the sky was a weird yellow color. Um, things were just really strange. And thankfully that's, that's passed, but now it's back to just, you know, regular allergies that are keeping right. me annoyed. Yep. <laughs> the, the allergies are getting me here in New York City too. Oh, it's no fun. But uh, what is fun is Star Wars toys. Yes. And I know we like to talk about them. And, you know, this was the perfect opportunity for us to react once more to um, a slew of announcements from Hasbro Pulse, uh, from Hasbro Pulse Con. And uh, what do you say we get right to it? Let's do it. Let's go straight into some of those Hasbro Pulse Con exclusives. All right, so these are the exclusives that uh, reportedly, or you know, I don't know which ones or all of them were intended to be exclusives to San Diego Comic Con. Um, obviously, that didn't happen because of, you know, pandemic stuff. And they're now Hasbro Con exclusives. So we have things like the Wampa. Mm -hmm. uh, tell us a little bit about this Wampa here. Well, the Wampa, it's a, it's a repack of the... Um the one that came out with Luke Skywalker a number of years ago near the start of um, the Black Series. So it's a good chance for people to get that if they don't have it. But also this one is repainted so that it's not not the bloody version. The, the one that I've got, he's all like covered in blood and uh -huh. stuff like that, which, you know, it's more fun for me. But if you want a nice clean Wampa, here's your chance to get it. Um, it's in vintage collection style packaging. So if you dig that that packaging throwback. It's a, uh, you know, for 30 bucks, it's a pretty good deal. Yeah, that's not bad. Um, what I don't get sometimes is they say, like, in this case, they mentioned in the live stream that they had going on, on YouTube yesterday that that Lucasfilm had given them um, updated, more accurate assets to base the paint scheme off of. And I'm like, how does that happen? This film was shot <laughs> in 1979. Yeah, it's, I, I, I don't know. Um, the Wump is a, it's a white, it's an abominable snowman, right? And I... My my definitive Wampa is still the one that I had from when I was a kid, uh, my actual vintage Wampa. So you know, all these other ones are neat and all, but he's 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 a he's a white hairy monster. I, I don't know. I don't know what else you could you could do to him. All right. So the next one is the Vintage Collection Clone Set. This is a three pack of Vintage Collection scale figures featuring clone troopers, something that uh, fans love, obviously. And uh, they were happy to give them to us, at least if you were lucky enough to get on this exclusive set. Yeah, this was this was announced a while ago, um, and I've been very excited for it the entire time. I'm glad I scored my set. Um, clones Echo, Fives, and Jesse. Poor, poor, dead Jesse. Um, spoiler alert for final season of Clone Wars. Um, Jesse doesn't make it. Um, yeah, I, you know, I wish that these, I would love a versions of these that still looked like the animated ones because I loved the animated style of the Clone Wars figures so much. Um, 
But getting them one way or the other, I'm, I'm super happy about. I think this is a great set. It is a great set. And uh, Clone Trooper 5s has already been kind of released, kind of not released. Um, at least that wave has been made available. Um, I had pre-ordered mine back in February when it leaked. And even to this day, how many months later are we? Uh, if you look at it on Amazon, it doesn't even say that it's that's Clone Trooper 5. It says like Vin 5 clone or something or other. <laughs> and the listing is not even there anymore. So Yeah, I, I can't find it anywhere. When when you uh, showed that picture on Twitter, I was like, what? That's a, You could get that now? Where? <laughs> and I looked around. I can't find it anywhere. So I'm, I'm hoping he shows back up, shows up for officially the first time. I, I don't know, but um, fingers crossed because I'd, I'd love to keep one on card. Yeah, it's a nice looking card back. It's a, you know, definitely a little bit, you know, it's, it's very clony, if you will. Mm-hmm. Um, so hopefully those other two figures in that set will be made available. I don't think they made any mention of that yesterday. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. Um, it would be cool if they became available, but, you know, with one of the other releases today, I'd, I'd be happy with those that pair being my vintage collection clones for the Clone Wars. Yeah, for the Luke pack yeah, from Comic Con last year, they did release them. They're, they're barely getting out uh, Jedi Luke from that set, which is a fantastic figure. But right. uh, from the previous one before that, uh, with Doctor Alfred, they said they were going to release the two droids separately, and they never did that. So yeah, I'd, I'd be surprised if we saw those. Um, happily surprised, but you know, surprised. Yeah, I feel like that time's kind of come and gone already. Yeah. So the other thing was the Endor Hero set. This is a, a a large set featuring Black Series action features. It's got Jedi Luke, it's got Endor Leia, and it has Han Solo all in their Endor getup, uh, along with Pop Blue and uh, Speeder Bike. And it's got this really fancy fold-out packaging that you can open up to uh, use as a display or diorama. And uh, yeah, really cool set. It's an amazing set. Um, it's not for me though, as I think I've mentioned to you before. I'm kind of over uh, Luke's and Leia's in the Black Series. I would like to start seeing some new characters. Um, I uh, I will buy because the, all these figures are coming out individually as well. At least Luke and Han and Leia. I will buy trench coat Han because that was my Han Solo figure when I was a kid, um, and I just dig that the silly trench coat he walks around in. But the one I'm I'm really bummed about is uh, Poplu. I love Ewoks. I've got uh, Tebow on pre-order, and I I, I want more Ewoks. Um, so I hope he gets released uh, single single packaged at some point in the future. Hopefully so. They didn't confirm anything, and they also said that the speeder bike was last released in 2018. I'm like, really? It was? No, it wasn't huh. released in 2018 in any way. <laughs> I, I don't so. think so. No. That's, no. been, that's been a while, yeah. Speeder bike's yeah. great. If you don't have one, buy this set. You get, you know, four great figures and a, and a speeder bike. Yeah, the good thing about this set, and I, I mean, I haphazardly say good thing because it's not quite a good thing if you want to get the set now, but um, they are offering that set for pre-order now so for, for a March release, and that's when mine's supposed to come in in March, unfortunately, because I missed out on the very first day. I forgot that these were going up for uh, Pulse Premium members, oh. um, but luckily I got the other the other two. And then the next thing they did was they showed the trailer for Mandalorian Season 2 to psych us up for um, Mandalorian Mondays. So I guess on Mondays, the Hasbro Pulse team is going to start, like, I'm going to guess they're going to reveal like one figure a week or something like that um, from the Mandalorian. I'm going to guess it's all Mandalorian Season 1 stuff. So maybe we'll finally see um, uh, Gus Fring. I forget his character's <laughs> name. Nick Nolte Ugnot. Um, I can't remember any of the other characters. Uh, they obviously left an impression on you. <laughs> Carl Weathers. Carl Weathers. <laughs> um yeah, I you know, f- fingers fingers crossed that people, big big uh, Mandalorian fans, will start getting a slow trickle out of all their their favorite stuff from the new series. I, I think yeah. that's fun. I think it's fun. You know, while I I would wish that they would just dump it all on us yesterday, if every Monday there's a new announcement, that's 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 fun. That's fun for fans. Yeah, no, that that is. Let's uh, let's hope they keep to that and that. You know, they're good announcements because you know if they're not great announcements, people aren't going to really care. Right. Yeah. If Mandalorian Monday is. Uh, New Funko Pop. Where, well, you're right. A fun, yeah, if it's a half hour and it's a Funko Pop or another scale Baby Yoda thing, I... I mm. <laughs> yeah, Baby Yoda is all over retail right now. Like, I, don't, I haven't really been to stores, but when I do pop into Target, they're, they're, they got a pl- healthy selection of Baby Yoda. Yeah, it's it's a real bummer that they didn't get that out for Christmas of last year because that's when it that's when the, the, the iron was hot. Um, 
I think that Baby Yoda at retail is going to start getting significantly marked down. Um, that's my guess. That's my guess. I think you'll be able to get it for you know pennies on the dollar. Yeah, they could just, be. They, uh, the, the, the time was last Christmas when Baby Yoda hype was at its peak. I'd be surprised if it if it the fever yeah. pitch on that one picks back up again. They were selling really well um, back in May when stuff started hitting, like stuff, you know, despite the pandemic, despite everything, they were selling really well. Like, you know, the, the online stores would sell out pretty quickly and retail wouldn't keep them on hand for more than a day or so. Um, and um, just this, just the other day, uh, Costco has an exclusive version of the Mattel plush that came out earlier in May. Mm. And uh, my friend Nick uh, who lives locally was able to uh, he found one in his co- at his Costco. It's a Costco exclusive version that has like it has the little um, the little shift knob or whatever it is. Oh, the little and, gear thing he plays with. Yeah, it's got That's the frog. Fun. It's got the like the 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 necklace with the minotaur, <laughs> uh, and it's the same price as the regular version. It's got all that stuff. So I was like, "Yep, I need that." So he got it for me. You definitely need yeah. that. Yeah, you definitely need. It. Does he come with a soup cup? Uh, he might come with a soup cup. I need to look. The, the thing that's interesting, though, is the frog from the picture he sent me was just like a regular frog. It's not even like a space frog. Huh. <laughs> Weird. Yeah, I think it's like a one-eyed frog in the show, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. This one has is just like a straight-up earth frog. So. <laughs> I know I'm in the minority, and I, I'm, I'm not in love with the Mandalorian like everyone else, but the Baby Yoda puppet is just an absolutely incredible thing. It's, yeah. it's yeah, it's really, yeah. My favorite, my favorite Star Wars thing when I was a kid was Jabba the Hutt. Um, because it was this giant, amazing alien puppet thing that <laughs> felt and looked like a real thing, right? That blew me away in 83 when I first saw it. Um, Baby Yoda's th- th- like that to me. Um, it's just I'm startled with what a wonderfully expressive little puppet it is. It's um, it's it's pretty amazing. Yeah, Jabba was, his, was always a really convincing special effect and... Uh, perhaps not as much so though as the 1997 special edition version. No, that was the one that really, that really <laughs> felt real when I watched Han Solo like <laughs> step over his tail awkwardly, and um, instead of the cool reveal of the Millennium Falcon with you know that that shot where you know they walk in and they see this giant amazing thing and there's a beautiful musical reveal and then Luke uh-huh. says, "What a piece of junk." Yeah. Um, instead, Rude. instead, it's just sort of uh, it's just another another shot, and it's the same scene as Greedo again. Yeah. Um, well, can't win them spe- all, I guess. Yeah, yeah, can't can't win them all, and also like the special editions have been with us now many years longer than the originals were yeah. with me as a kid. So eh. yeah, I could I could relitigate it forever, but what's the yeah. point? Yeah. Well, I guess at least we have two thousand four uh, DVD. CGI job, it's a little bit better. So. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Voice I still just... sucks, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, it does. And yeah. anyway, <laughs> yeah, anyway, anyway. You know what? I'm su- <sighs> yeah. I know we're still on a tangent. I'm surprised they haven't done like a black series, like convention exclusive that has like a, a repainted job of with photo reel and like like more gritty looking and has like other like Jabba's palace related stuff in it. Oh man, I so. I love Jabba the Hutt so much, so I've got my Black Series one up on my, my shelf here, prominently displayed with his Gamorrean guards and Lando and uh, Hutt Slayer Leia, who desperately needs a face repaint, desperately. Uh-huh. Um, but man, I I didn't get the San Diego Comic-Con exclusive one for what I considered obvious reasons at the time, but that's the only way you can get Salacious Crumb and all of his little things that sit around uh, you know, Jabba, yeah, you know, like his... I don't his hookah and stuff and i'm just like ah oh, jeez i i, I really want that stuff now i wish i wish i had that too i mean yeah well they really they just barely got around to the han carbonite so hopefully you know they'll right. figure a way to do that that's a good know. point yeah fingers fingers crossed on that and then after that what we really need the most needed star wars black series characters size noodles max rebo and droopy mccool but do you do size noodles as the puppet or as the CGI? The 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 you do the puppet. You do yeah. the puppet. You always go for the puppet. That's the right mm-hmm. answer. Always the puppet. Mm-hmm. Yeah, always the puppet. <laughs> yeah, that'd be fun. Um, all right. So uh, they kind of said, you know, you know, we're not going to announce a ton of things today, and that to me that was a little surprising because this is Hasbro PulseCon. Like the whole point of them <laughs> is to announce new toys. Uh, so. 
Yeah, but Hasbro Star Wars division at this point in time, it's consistent with, oh, we're not going to reveal much. Like, every single time now for years, it's we're not going to reveal much. I was actually surprised at the amount of stuff that they did reveal, given that generally it's like, oh, there's two Black Series characters and a couple repaints of something mm-hmm. else. Wait until next Toy Fair when more stuff's coming out. Meanwhile, the Marvel mm-hmm. Legends team, I, I can only imagine how many things that got revealed for those guys. Yeah, Sorry. I need to go back and look. I really wanted to see what was coming for Ghostbusters, but um, Ghostbusters will find out in an hour. In an hour, very cool, very cool. Um, so uh, all right. So the first thing they kind of started with was the vintage collection, right? They 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 started with you know their annual, you know, every year they this year we actually got two of them, so it'll probably be the same next year, I imagine. But there's two repaint, refresh, repack waves, the three re's. Yeah. Yeah, it's the repack collection at this point. Um, yeah, so we got um, repacked Anakin Skywalker from Attack of the Clones, uh, repacked Padme from The Phantom Menace, repacked Tide Pilot from the original trilogy, and repacked uh, Battle Droid from The Phantom Menace. Um, okay. Um, yeah, so the, when they started back the vintage collection, they said the vintage collection needs to be a conversation. You know, we're going to listen to you guys. I think they even asked at one point, like, what repacks would you guys like to see or what figures would you like to see come back? And for over the last couple of years, I don't think anybody has said that they wanted, you know, one of the figures that helped kill the vintage collection back in 2013, uh, which was this version of, of um, Padme, you know, Queen Amidala. Uh, I don't think anybody said they wanted this particular version of Anakin to come back. I mean, it's not a bad figure, but I don't think anybody was asking for it. I can't. Uh, I can't think of anybody that has. Yeah. The Tie Pilot. It not only is it an outdated sculpt from you know well over a decade ago at this point, but I don't think anybody was asking for that. It just came out in the Tie Fighter pack, same figure. Right. Uh, and then, and then uh, the Battle Droid. I I like. I like that. Uh, I think that that's a good one. It does kind of have a high aftermarket value at this point, even though they've done tons and tons and tons of battle droids. <laughs> this one is still kind of like the uh, the definitive one that they've come out with so far. Um, so I think that is a smart repack. The other ones are not smart repacks, and you know I don't like kind of starting off on on uh, you know negatively. But this 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 particular wave of of refresh figures just comes across as pretty tone deaf. Yeah, I I I was disappointed by it. Um... Like you, I'm I'm happy about the battle droid. I I pre-ordered one of those, but the rest is an easy pass for me. Um, you know, I guess if there's people that are getting into the vintage collection now and they didn't get those figures the first time around, great. You know that that's awesome. Um, I'm grateful it wasn't another Han and Luke. Um, I'd be happy to see not see those characters repacked for another couple of years. Uh, frankly. Um. But yeah, so but then after that they had a uh, vintage collection Clone Wars Rex. He's a repack from the the Legacy Collection or the the small the three and three quarter black series collection or something like that. But um, him on the vintage card back that's fun. I'll buy that. So somebody um uh, we were talking about this on Instagram. I posted something about these repacks uh, last night, and somebody said, "Well, you know why don't why didn't they take those twenty fifteen black series three and three quarter inch figures that they did for Anakin? You know, there was a plain, the best one they've done so far, Attack of the Clones Anakin. They did a an arena Padme. Uh, why didn't they just take those figures, update them with photo reel, and then slap those on vintage for the first time, give them new numbers, and um, you know they wouldn't have been the same thing. You know, yes, we would have had them." You know, without photo reel, but you know they, they would have been making their vintage collection debuts, and arguably those would probably have been preferable given that they're the default costumes somewhat. Uh, especially, well, at least in Anakin's case, yeah. Um, you know, I, I think that would have. I agree. I think that would have. Those would have been better choices if they were going to go with those figures characters. I, I I would have been more likely to purchase them at that point. Yeah. Um, I part of the amount of re repack. Um, with these things at this point is almost like they're not even going to do a different card back. I think it's just straight up. What is a thing that we already have that we can just send exactly back out as is? Um, I, yeah, that's, that's kind of how it feels to me at this point. I mean, we got re on a vintage card back because he came in that playset with the Jabba the, Jabba the Hutt thing. I think anything in the main line, it's going to be straight repack. Um, right now of something that's just already existed with you know updated facial paint apps except i 
don't find the updated facial paint apps to be very they're not as good on the three and three quarters as they are on the black series the black series makes the things look amazing the small figures mm, they're hit or miss yeah um yeah it's 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 unfortunate i mean it just you know they didn't this was kind of like their their main like focus in terms of vintage collection yesterday and um i mean yeah, it's you know they didn't announce another full wave of figures. This was it was just like this was the wave, and yeah. for them yeah. to have kind of led with this, I just felt was kind of a bit of a downer, and to not really follow it up with another like, you know, you know, if they would have said, okay, we're doing this repack wave, but we're also going to be doing this wave, like a brand new wave of characters people have been asking for, right? That would have really changed, you know, I think the reception, you know, to the vintage collection portion of of the reveals, but. Um, again, it just comes across as tone deaf, you know, characters nobody asked for and, you know, not really anything, you know, terribly new to show for it beyond that. So it was mm-hmm. just, you know, really lackluster, really lackluster. Yeah, I was, I was, I was not surprised there when it was like, oh, here's the vintage collection stuff. Oh, it's four repacks. Okay, next. All right. So the next thing that uh, they revealed that was, I mean, <laughs> so, you know, we're just talking about repacks. So the next thing that they sort of revealed that we, was kind of already rumored was this captain rex figure um making its debut in vintage collection but this isn't exactly a new figure is it no no it's it's a repack from one of the uh three and three quarter scale ones from a a number of years back i'm not certain exactly which line it is it's either the legacy collection or the 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 small black series ones so uh, you know people have been asking for years for the sculpt that you know they have we know they have it because you know images have come out you know going way back when of this highly detailed you know really nice looking captain rex figure that uh is based on the uh you know just the the straight up clone that they started giving uh selling in the in the vintage collection when it was first out you know they've done several variants based on that for both phase one and phase two so a lot of people were hoping oh this is finally going to be you know the definitive captain rex but uh no uh, it's it's the disappointing one from 2015 (laughs) oh my goodness yeah, you know, I'm buying this one for the card art, so it's fine with me for me, but uh I can I totally understand the dismay at it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then the the last thing that they announced for vintage collection in terms of figures is also it's kind of new, but it's also not cuz it's based on the uh the Rogue One clone trooper from Stormtrooper from last year. Uh and this is the incinerator trooper from The Mandalorian. Right. And that's a Walmart exclusive, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Pre-order's <laughs> up, though, so at least as of the time of this recording, it's up, so. Oh, good. All right. If, All right. Uh, you, know, I, you know, it's two per, per order. I don't oh. know how many orders you can place, but it's two per order, so they are limiting it to some extent. Um, so, but no, it's still up, so that's, that's a good sign, you know, mm-hmm. this is the day after. Oh, fantastic. And, All right. Um, that's good news. That's good news. That is good news. But, you know, it is Walmart, so hopefully they don't ship them in a bubble loop. <laughs> uh, folded in half. <laughs> uh, don't get your hopes up. Um, yeah, yeah, so this is this is neat, and again, Mandalorian fans got to be excited for this. But for me, this is it's a repacked stormtrooper. He's got a new weapon. Yeah, it cool. looks really cool. It, it looks really cool. The colors are nice. Um, the I'm glad that there's a flame effect. I mean, you kind of have to have it with this character, but I could have also seen him like just not include that. Um, so I'm happy that that's there because I think it is a pretty neat looking accessory that I'll probably droop after a day or two, but, uh, it's cool that it's there. Yeah. I remember some of the, uh, clone troopers, the flame troopers from the Clone Wars line came with that and yet it does droop after over time, but it's a super cool thing to add to, uh, your, your action figure when he's, when he's got a flamethrower, a giant flaming thing coming out of it. Uh, two thumbs up for that. We've been going through this with like, okay, so here's the new repack. Here's the new... I think we're about to get to some things that are a little bit more exciting for you. Uh-huh. <laughs> let's, let's hope so. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It's Black Series time. It's the Black Series. You know, you know, you know we're fans of both scales. Mm-hmm. For Black Series, uh, what, did they, what did they lead off with? A clone. <laughs> Your favorite. <laughs> Here's the thing. I love clones. I, uh, I I really do. I have in the three and three quarter scale. I have so many of the darn things. Like I would just go and buy clones all the time. Um, 
And this is this is using the new uh, sculpt of the fa Phase One armor clone from um, Attack of the Clones or the first mm -hmm. three seasons of Clone Wars. Uh, he's plain white, um, so he, he's a, it's, that's a really great army builder. Um, yeah, I yeah. because I've already got a white clone. I'm good, but um, there's no doubt that anytime you put out a clone, you're you're printing money. So it's a smart choice. Right, and this is the smartest choice for a clone. I mean, they have this brand new body that we've talked about before um, that you can, you know, pose in a little bit more. You mm -hmm. know, it it looks better proportionally speaking. You don't see like the the pegs on the on the knees. Right. Uh, it looks a lot better. It's clean, and um, you know now we're getting this brand new um, version of the the classic original clone trooper. You know, just phase one straight up white clone trooper, and I think that's pretty awesome. Yeah, yeah. While I'm not super excited about it because it's another clone, it's it's a good choice. People are going to love it. Clones fly off the shelves, off the digital shelves all the time. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, I, I can't promise I won't get one. Certainly if I spot it in a store. If I'm going to a store and I spot it there, I'll, I'll probably pick one up. Then I'll have cool. two plain white clones. Yeah, you'll have two plain white clones. Um, and I, you know, what I'm starting to wonder is, are they going to repaint them again, giving us all the different ranks with on this new sculpt? Yeah, why not? Do it. <laughs> put them, put them back out there. You know, the, do like, a box set though. No more Walgreens exclusive. <laughs> uh, yeah, my Walgreens doesn't even carry any of these things anymore. <laughs> you know, I stopped at Walgreens yeah um, two days ago for the first time, and the last time I'd been to Walgreens was before the pandemic. But now they're getting the blue, uh, the lieutenant exclusive. Yeah. Uh, on the you know based on the older sculpt, of course, but the you know that's the last one that we needed. And people have been saying, yeah, you know this this has been hand handled pretty well. I go to Walgreens, they have it, so I'm like, okay, I go in. They barely had anything. The only black series they had was like Cassie and Andor from four years ago. Oh yeah, Mark, marked down to seven ninety nine and still rotting on the shelves. Um, there shouldn't be figures from four years ago on any shelf, no matter where it is. So yeah, yeah. Ours, ours was just General Veers. It was just an entire row of General Veers for oh. since the since whenever General Veers came out. It's just been that and ours. So I think they they gave up on it. I don't see Marvel Legends there anymore either. It's basically their little toy section is empty, which is disappointing because that's pretty much the only place I go in person to shop for toys now. Yeah, they um, had so much generic stuff, like like not like non brand. You know, like when you go to Walmart and you see like all these, they have like dinosaurs that make s sounds and stuff, but they're not even like based on any property. They're just like generic. Right. That, yeah. That's kind of what the Walgreens look like. They didn't have barely they barely had any toys at all to begin with, but what they mm -hmm. did have was like mostly like generic stuff. Yeah, yeah, that's what it felt like. Um. Anyway, this is something to get really excited about. This is something that I think you're gonna be excited about. Tell us about what came next. Jar Jar! It's Jar Jar! They finally have given us Jar Jar! Jar Jar, who received so much hate for so many years, including from cranky old yours truly. Jar Jar, who I think is a character that's actually aged really well over time. Um, people, people love him at this point, whether ironically or not. Ahmed Best is a delightful, delightful fellow. Uh, yes. He certainly didn't deserve the, the hate he got for playing that character. No. Um, in the episodes of the Clone Wars, Jar Jar in is in. He's great. Uh, he fits in, I think, better in that than you know the original movie he was revealed in. Um, but this, he's a, an amazing looking character. Um, when the Phantom Menace line came out for the Vintage Collection years ago, um, I decided I wanted to have four figures from each movie. Right. Uh, uh -huh. So I had, like, from episode one, it was Maul and Qui-Gon and Padme and Darth Sidious. And then I realized I've got to get the Jar Jar because, in fact, Jar Jar is probably the most iconic thing about Star Wars episode one, The Phantom Menace. Um, yeah. If, if you walk up to a random person on the street and say, hey, Star Wars episode one, The Phantom Menace, what do you think? Jar Jar is the thing that's going to pop into their head, likely. Um, this figure looks amazing. He's part of the deluxe. It costs more line. I don't care. He looks great. He comes with uh, weapons, which you know, sure, give Jar Jar weapons. Uh, I'm, I'm. Uh, <laughs> That'll go over I'm, very well. I'm probably gonna dress him in a Jedi robe and uh, have him be from the uh, the the Jedi Je secret general Gungan. You know, the Clone Wars episode where he and C-3PO are. Both being everyone's favorite characters on uh, mm. every in the in, with everyone's favorite bad guy, Newt Gunray. Um, yeah. 
<laughs> I'm so excited for this one. Bomb Bad Jedi. Bomb Bad Jedi, yeah. I, I, <laughs> I remember I remember that episode coming and being like, oh my god, they're going to put Jar Jar in the Clone Wars? Oh no. And then I was so wrong. I was so wrong. Sorry, I ranted and raved there, but I pretty much jumped off yeah, of my couch yeah, with excitement. Okay. Yeah, when, no, uh, that's... And, you yeah. know, Yak Face has predicted this one for almost a year now. Uh, Greg Titus posted his drawing of it, I think, even. Um, but, uh, yeah, so excited for this one. What do you think? I'm excited. Um, you know, this is the most exciting thing that they announced, like, mm-hmm. so up to this point. So No question. Um, Ab- absolutely my most excited thing from the entire presentation. Yeah, and, you know, like you said, he's, he's developed, like, uh, you know, people have come around on Jar Jar. Um, he's almost now, like, a fan favorite. Yeah, and it's interesting. It's interesting what time does, and I, I do wonder, like you know, the the current entertainment, how that's going to look, you know, in in twenty years, you know, how people are going to feel about char- certain characters and you know movies and stuff. Yeah, people but, um, people people forget that Return of the Jedi was thought of as a pretty bad movie when it came out. It was it was not it was not hailed as the the greatest ending to a trilogy of all time. It was it was a weird wizard character that just came out of nowhere that was now Darth Vader's boss. Um, Luke and Leia who were suddenly uh, uh, brother and sister, which is just pulled out of Lucas's rear end um, to have a twist there to try and you know Ewoks. Um, all these things we've grown up with and are just so used to now were not liked at the time. Um, that's yeah. possible. What's going to happen with the the new trilogy as well? Yeah, yeah. Time will tell. Um, but, you know, not only is this an exciting announcement, the figure itself looks fantastic. It looks mm-hmm. really, really good. And, you know, it's got, like you said, he's, he comes with three accessories. And, um, you know, I think it's best just to have Jar Jar not have any accessories because, you know, yeah. th- that never goes over very well. Um, <laughs> but, you know, twenty nine ninety nine Deluxe. It looks like it's a general release, right? It doesn't seem like it's exclusive to anywhere. Thankfully, I, that, that appears to be the case because when I when I went on uh, at six o'clock yesterday to try and buy him on Pulse, he was already sold out. So thanks oh, wow. to you for letting me know I could buy him on I could pre-order him on Amazon because I was uh, that one I was like oh no because I would guess Jar Jar is probably going to be like a Gamorrean guard, probably tricky to get a hold of unless uh-huh. he's available everywhere. Yeah, that one was hard to get. That one was hard. It wasn't like um. Mm-hmm. What's his name? Um, the big slug dude from um, yeah, yeah, that one. Moloch. Was his... Moloch. Yeah, it wasn't like Moloch, Solo. right? Moloch was just rotted on the shelves. Yeah, it's too bad. Um, Moloch is an amazing figure. And I, I got a real kick out of the character, figure. too. But, you know, he, he doesn't have 30 years of nostalgia tied around him. Exactly. Yeah, true. Exactly. Good point. Jar Jar like... has 20 years of nostalgia built around him. Yeah, he does. <laughs> I mean... Yeah. And, you know, a lot of people were kids when that came out. Now they're, you know, adults and stuff, you know, they're, they're grown. And it's like, oh, yeah, Jar Jar, you know, it's something to get excited about. Yeah. Well, um, here's the thing. Here's, here's the thing about a uh, quick, quick aside on Star Wars prequels and how nostalgia has sort of changed them. When Phantom Menace came out, it was so jarringly different from the original trilogy that that drove people like me nuts. And we really didn't like it because of the jarring differences. Now, I think there's still... There were better scripts to be made out of those movies and better direction and some strange choices in them. But at this point in time, I don't think Star Wars fans... Star Wars fans don't look at The Phantom Menace and be like, well, geez, this doesn't... This doesn't seem exactly like The Empire Strikes Back anymore. You know, it's... it's We've yeah. accepted this... It's all Star Wars... And the Phantom Menace's jarring difference with its tone, with its its technology, with you know how things look, was all intentional. It was intended to bring you towards this thing later on. Um, Jar Jar was a ridiculous character. And I think that the decision to have an entire action sequence where he kind of clumsily defeats all the battle droids pushed it over the top into a... Like, I don't like that still. Um... But overall, the rest of him, he's, he's goofy and kind of funny now. I, I, I've I totally turned a, turned a page on Jar Jar Binks yeah. years ago, years ago. Yeah. So, yeah. so excited for this figure. So excited for this figure. Me this too. this cantina chatter should just be called We're Excited About Jar Jar, the podcast. <laughs> Maybe that'll be the title of the episode. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so, yeah, no, really cool, really exciting. 
Uh, the next thing that they have here is uh, Return of the Jedi Boba Fett, which, you know, we all knew that eventually they were going to get around to doing the Return of the Jedi version of the character. Um, me personally, I've always kind of preferred that armor. Just, you know, it's, it's a little more colorful to me. It's a little more interesting. Mm -hmm. um, but what was surprising, uh, I think a lot of us thought they were just going to repaint the previous version. Mm -hmm. um, this is actually a brand new sculpt. It's a completely new figure. Yeah, I mean, that's that's super cool. Um Again, you were the one that had to point out to me what the differences between the two outfits were, like a couple years ago, I think, um, because those sorts of details I kind of miss. Um, but for, I mean, Boba Fett is like a clone trooper. It's printing money. You're always going to be able to sell Boba Fett. And yeah, this is always. a slightly different version of, of Boba Fett, you know? So, frankly, he's probably the one that belongs in my Jabba's Palace, uh, uh, my yeah. Jabba's Palace setup rather than the Empire Strikes Back one. Yeah, oh. my theory is that he got to Jabba's palace. Jabba gave him a huge payment for, you know, delivering Han Solo and Carbonite, and uh, he even made some upgrades to his armor. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, <laughs> sure. He was uh, he was definitely not? double dipping on uh, his his uh, his bounty on that one, getting paid for getting paid by Vader and by Jabba. Yeah, I know. Right? I never I never thought about that actually. Yeah. Do you think that um, in order to find Han Solo, he just uh, had a tracking fob? So that it just takes them straight to him. Uh, I don't know. That's, that's a good question. If the, if if, yeah, probably there was probably uh, there was a bounty on Han, right? I mean, he talked about that in the beginning of Empire. So, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Now that you mentioned, it, yeah, there would have had to have been. Then why didn't all the other bounty hunters just get the tracking fob and just go straight to him? Because I think it only works like at a certain point. Like I think you have to be pretty close, like to them. Hmm. Uh, I don't think it works from like, you know, from one ship like to another ship that's like. 30 miles away or something. I think you have to like, cause remember Mandalorian, they gave him the location of, they said they could, we can give you the last known location of, of the asset. But mm -hmm. from there, the tracking fob, like once he actually got on planet and got, when um, Quill um, showed him like, okay, this is the, the little village or whatever, where, you know, the, mm -hmm. the everybody's coming to, to try and get this asset. Uh, that's when the fob like started like working. So I think you have to be pretty close. Hmm. Interesting. That's an interesting theory. Well, I, it's my observation from Mando, but um, uh, yeah. Anyway, Black Series Boba Fett. The sculpt looks it looks fantastic. It is brand new. It's, it looks a lot more seamless. It looks a lot more proportionate to me. And um, you know, I know it's it's just for you. It's, it's just kind of another another Boba. But I think this was kind of necessary, and I think it's pretty awesome. Yeah, I'm 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 on the fence about this one. This this one I might end up getting because Boba Fett's awesome, and. Uh, and I've got my six bounty hunters in one display, so you know I could easily have another Boba Fett in my Jabba the Hutt display. It uh, it wouldn't wouldn't be wouldn't be pulling teeth to get me to do that. I, I like how you're reserved about some of these. Like I think that creates for a better dynamic because I'm just like, oh, new figure, bye. <laughs> and you're you're kind of a little more thoughtful about you know. Well, you know, you know, I kind of have a Boba Fett already, so. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. I you know. There's limited space. There's limited space. Yeah, I ran out of space ages ago. I still buy it. <laughs> All right. This is another one that I think was, was heavily rumored. And tell us what the next announcement they made was. It is Dark Side Ray from The Rise of Skywalker. I'm really glad that we're getting, um, that they're not completely done with The Rise of Skywalker. But of course, this is the only thing they announced from the movie. Um, I was really, really keeping my fingers crossed for a, an Emperor Palpatine. You know, I know. With his, but um you made that really cool card back for him too the uh, vintage collection one yeah i'd like him in both scales but uh, you know i was kind of hoping like for black series you know they'd give us that but no um i mean i'm really happy to get dark side ray i mean it was just like two seconds of the movie but <laughs> you know it left an impression yeah. especially because it was featured you know in the in the trailer yeah um but um no it's um no it looks really cool and you know i know, I know a lot of people did want this oh yeah so, no, I can't complain about it. The only thing that I've seen, I've noticed is that, I don't know if you, if you, if you look at that scene, like she has like the same, like, like the same saber as like Kylo Ren. Like, you know, it's got like the, the, it's got the same like crackling effect and everything. Oh, does it? Oh, that's cool. So that, but the figure doesn't, the figure just has regular red lightsaber blades. So. Oh, huh. That's, uh, that's unfortunate. Yeah. You know, that might be something to put on the list for Hasbro <laughs> to ask yeah. them. Um, that totally should be. Yeah, it's all all the pictures of her are just digital renders. Um, right. But, so 
But yeah, I mean the figure looks the figure looks great. Yeah, no, it's it's really neat, and you know it's not like some like expanded universe thing. It was actually in the movie, which is kind of yeah. cool. So yeah, mm-hmm. I don't know if the hood is supposed to be plastic or not. If the hood is plastic, that would be a smarter choice, because then it can just lay on her head correctly. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, I guess we'll see. Yeah, but no, this is an exciting announcement. Mm-hmm. And uh, we got a couple more here for for Black Series. So the next one was the Incinerator Trooper, mm-hmm. um, another one that was rumored. You know that uh, there wasn't really much in terms of actual surprises. At least, you know, it's funny because the surprises were the things that nobody wanted, <laughs> but <laughs> the stuff that wasn't surprising was the stuff that people really did want. So right, yeah. Well, it's also like a lot of these things have leaked in the past couple of weeks. So at this point, you know. They're, they're showing us a bunch of stuff, but some of it got leaked early. I'm not going to hold Hasbro's feet to the fire about that. Um, like, I think we'd already seen a picture of the Black Series Incinerator Trooper, hadn't we? Um, I don't Am I know. crazy? Yeah, I don't know. We saw a photo of it, but I, I know that there it was, like, you know, it was heavily rumored that it was going to be coming. Um, but, you know, here it is. It is it is based on the new Stormtrooper, of course. It's just coming out now. I don't have one yet, but the new one mm-hmm. is just starting to, to hit. Right. Um, but yeah, no, it looks great. Like the vintage collection, you know, it's, it's kind of cool that they're doing both at the same time. That's a great, that, that, they should just always do that. <laughs> I know, right? Just you'd have always a, be the mandate. Just release the, the things in each scale. You'd have a lot less complaints. Yeah. And, um, you know, unless it's something that's already out in vintage, because there's a good chance that we'll have something in three or three quarter inch already that's coming out in black series. True. At least if it's based on an older, you know, older entertainment. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. But no, this looks cool. And like the vintage counterpart, it does have a huge flame effect. And yeah, this is, I'm really excited about this one. Yeah. Now you've got to get, uh, they've got to give us a Carl Weathers figure. So it can be Carl Weathers and Cara Dune and the Mandalorian all like huddled in a corner while the flaming guy comes in. Um, I mean, you know that Carl Weathers is going to be released, uh, revealed in the next month. Oh yeah. The the real question is going to be, is he going to be based on season one or two? Probably one, but one it'll be season one yeah but um no i don't think i don't um, think they get the heads up enough in advance to uh um to have a season two one ready right yeah totally. that's my guess anyway that's my guess i anyway. think i think that i think you're right i think that they're gonna announce at some point a wave of it. it's gonna be it's gonna be um uh moff gideon mm-hmm. right moff it's gideon, gonna moff be gideon. quill and um and carl weathers at <laughs> bare minimum yeah I mean, even as someone that's not a giant fan of the Mandalorian, you know I'm going to buy all those. <laughs> yeah, it's like, oh, yeah. come on, they're, they're, you get a Carl Weathers action figure, Moff Moff Gideon. I, I always forget his name because I always think of Gus Fring, but um, that actor has just got such great screen presence. Um, yeah, oh yeah, he does. He just showed up in The Boys if you watch that on Amazon. Uh uh-uh. uh And then the next reveal is even better. The next one is even better, huh? So this is, uh, I agree. This is something that's, that's to me is really exciting because I really thought the character was cool. We don't know a ton about her, but mm-hmm. I thought it was a really cool like armor, like design and <laughs> I'm already giving it away. Uh, the design <laughs> was really cool. And I just, you know, the way she talked and everything, I just thought she was really cool. But yeah, we get the armorer mm-hmm. from uh, the Mandalorian. And uh, tell us a little bit about the different ways we'll be able to get the armor. Well, she went up for pre-order, I think, yesterday on Hasbro Pulse. The Hasbro Pulse version is an exclusive that has some extra extra um, doodads. I'm trying to click through the pictures here. I'm going to guess that she comes with these, most of this stuff in the regular. There's going to be a regular release of her as well, and I'm going to guess she comes with, like, her hammer and, like, her tools. But the exclusive release comes with this cool this cool like helmet that she can like pound into shape and uh, uh, I, uh, uh, fire effects like glowing you know like the, the the tools she's using have been under the heat for a while so they're like glowing red um, it's possible that her furry like a uh, uh, kind of little half cape thing that might only be furry for the exclusive and it might be plastic for the regular release I don't know for certain there though um, yeah I'll be happy with a regular release on this one but yeah, a really good looking figure and you know I, i'm i'm glad that she is coming in mainline as well because you know that'll be another opportunity to get her even though she won't have all the accessories but you know still cool and um yeah that about does it for like mainline black series releases so 
Uh, after that, they're bringing something back that wasn't that didn't have a presence at retail this year, but did have in 2019. So tell us about what's coming back uh, next year. The next thing they did was the next set of four archive collection figures. These are figures that you know had been released previously, but are maybe a little difficult to get now. Um, and best of all, they, they come with the photo reel paint apps, um, which really make these figures sing. Um, so the fan choice was Commander Cody. So mm-hmm. for all of you out there, clone clone nuts that don't have Commander Cody, you can get him. Uh, he's a great figure. I've I've already got him, so that's awesome. Then it's Hoth Luke, this time not all bloodied up by the Wampa. Hoth Han in the brown jacket, which apparently, if you go into the actual Lucasfilm archives, it's apparently brown. Yeah, um, I've seen it in person. Oh, you have seen yeah. So it's it's just one of those things. that's like that. Like the Tie Fighters are not actually blue, right? They're gray, but. You put a blue light filter in front of your uh, yeah. your camera to make it, you know, look cooler. <laughs> Makes things <laughs> blue. Um, and then Grand Admiral Thrawn, who I didn't know was difficult to get at this point. Yeah, he's going for around 60 on on eBay. I looked him up yesterday, which isn't a... I mean, it's a, it's a lot, obviously, but this I find this wave to be, you know, like the Vintage Collection Refresh wave, these, I find these to be very disappointing. Uh, other than Cody, which, you know, makes sense. People voted for Cody. Why didn't they just do all four, the top four people voted for? Or, you know, it's yeah, just... Yeah, I would have preferred that. Uh, all right, so I, I don't have to pretend to be excited about this. Yeah, I I, I was dismayed. <laughs> I was dismayed when Cody got revealed as the fan's choice, but that's only because I had him, and I had no idea that his aftermarket value was, like, crazy. Um, so then it made sense. But, yeah, the other ones, like, eh. Okay. The other ones are disappointing. I mean, particularly Hoth, Luke, and Hoth Han, because, you know, like you say, it's always Luke and, and Han, right? But Yeah, I'm I mean, sick of them. These, these are, are, I mean, those sets, even up until, like, earlier this year, you could get those sets for retail, like, on Amazon, like, yeah. you know, third party. Like, they're not rare figures. And, like, you know, y- yeah, this time they have photo reel, and this time Luke is, is uh, non-battle damage, but... Like, even this Han, he just came out, like, a year or two ago, right? In an exclusive, like, European, like, set that was that's still available on Amazon, too, from third parties. I think so, yeah. Uh, with Leia. He came with Leia. Right, um, yeah. So, it's like... He doesn't have the hood up in that one, though, right? Doesn't he have the hood down in that one? I, I he, Yeah, I think, you're, I think he does have the hood down. But the, the figure has always been too tall is a problem. So, mm. they didn't make any adjustments other than, you know, changing them to photo reel, right? So... Yeah. Um, it's yeah, an easy no, pass for me. Yeah, I mean, it's but, just... But, you know, I've, I've got Cody and Thrawn, so... I've even got a Hoth Luke, actually, because um, I got that set. Um, right. But, you know, for people that need to pick them up, I guess, cool. But I I think that there were better choices they could have made. I mean, there really were. I mean, I think the clone theme, you know, following on Cody being the winner would have been pretty strong. Like, have a have Captain Rex. Captain Rex goes for more than, than Thrawn does, you know, these days. Mm-hmm. Captain Rex could have been in here. 501st Clone Trooper. Yep. Um, you know, just, just play up that clone theme. You know, they could have done that. Um, you know, maybe they want to give us those, like, on the new mold, which is fine. In that case, you know, there are other characters that go for a lot more on the secondary market that could have been placed in here as well so i mean i just feel like these these choices are just just not very good it feels like there's a mandate that it's always got to be han and luke these days like they've, but they've i mean this be is hadden. but this is the archive you know it's like like the whole point of it is is for it to be greatest hits figures that are hard to get otherwise you know not just like i mean this just again like tone deaf it's just like nobody asked for han and luke and hoth gear to come back in six inch yeah, I don't think so either. I, uh, I've, I've not seen any clamoring for that. I've seen the clamoring for Commander Cody, uh, and that's just because of the fan's choice to pick on that. But, yeah, I don't know what the order was, but it feels like they should have just gone through and done the top four picks rather than random ones they just wanted to do. Um, yeah. Yeah, this... yeah, disappointing. Yeah, very, very, very disappointing. I mean, some people told me Greedo, you know, Greedo, I guess, apparently has shot up in value in recent years um qui-gon people wanted qui-gon with photo reel because the you know the last qui-gon they did doesn't look very good yeah i like that um, qui-gon but i uh, the the eyes was they kind of did a weird thing with the eyes right let me look what uh greedo goes for on ebay um well, i guess you can get one for 28 bucks oh no that's got a day left and it's like 50 bucks yeah greedo's really like com- 50 bucks 60 yeah. bucks funny story couple weeks ago a uh-huh. 
couple of weeks ago, in uh, my wife and I took a trip to New London, Connecticut, and we went to a comic book shop there, and they had Greedo at the original twenty dollar price tag. So I finally now own Black Series Greedo. Oh, nice! nice. Yeah, with his, I was with his really his excited. Oblong, with his oblong eyes that are inaccurate. <laughs> but, um, yeah, yeah, you know, but I, it's Greedo. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, there you go. That could have been an archive release with 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 more film accurate paint, change the head sculpt to give him the the correct eyes and. You know, yeah. that, 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 you know, I could have seen that. I would have been on board with that. But yeah, I think that would have been a better choice. Yeah. So, uh, again, this just disappoints me because, you know, there aren't a ton of slots for them to do new figures in, you know, even in six inch. So for them to um, to just go with figures nobody asked for is just I've, that, that bothers me to no end. Yeah. They talk about smart repacks all the time and about engaging the community. But, you know, it doesn't seem like they really do that in some of these cases. I, I definitely get that feeling. I do wonder if that was an edict from Steve Evans, who's uh, left several years ago. He now works for the Marvel team. Um, so I, I wonder if it's just not, they're not paying as, as close attention anymore. Or if we're just totally out of touch with what collectors want and they really want Hoth Luke and Hoth Han and Attack of the Clones Anakin again. Um, and, we're, and we're the crazy people. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know for certain we in some to ways too many people yeah I know for certain in some ways I am a crazy person because whereas I'm sort of mm, lukewarm on the Mandalorian the next set of figures I was pretty excited about yeah we already you, you didn't need to spell that out we already knew that you were a weirdo but um, <laughs> yeah so okay these are interesting because these started leaking out a couple of days <laughs> a few days before like Hasbro PulseCon happened but I thought these were a joke. I thought somebody was really like, like, like just screwing with, like, customizing some yeah. stuff and like yeah. putting it on online. But Yakface started posting it. And I'm like, oh well, you know, if Yakface is posting it, then there's got to be something here. Mm-hmm. Um, all right. So tell us what they announced yesterday. They are holiday versions of various trooper figures. Each one exclusive to its own gosh darn retailer, Target and Walmart and Amazon and Best Buy and GameStop think that that's it maybe there's another one um and these are ridiculous they are repaints of a snow trooper a sith trooper a phase two clone trooper a storm trooper and the solo range trooper also known as pimp trooper um each comes with a little buddy snow trooper comes with a porg sith trooper comes with babu frick clone trooper comes with a porg storm trooper comes with a snow porg and the Pimp Daddy Trooper comes with Dio from Rise of Skywalker. And they are just in these garish white and green and red wacky patterns. Some of them have ugly sweaters on uh, or painted onto them. They have like painted on socks. Um, this is ridiculous. This is absolutely <laughs> absurd. Someone on Twitter accurately said oh, yeah, we're not going to give you, you know, the clones from the Umbara arc. Um, we're going to give you this thing instead. Um, but a couple of years ago, Super 7 revealed that they were having a Christmas-themed Masters of the Universe Classics figure that was coming out. And everyone was, whoa, what's it going to be? And in the end, it just ended up being He-Man with a Christmas hat on and a, a sword that's painted up like a candy cane. And we uh-huh. were all angry, angry, angry. You know, the way that only toy nerds like us can get angry. That figure skyrocketed in price. And I realized I really wanted it last Christmas when we were unloading all of our Christmas decorations. When we're setting up our Christmas decorations, it suddenly struck me. It's like, oh, my God, that's what holiday He-Man is. It's (laughs) for the holiday season. I take down my normal He-Man and I put up the silly holiday one. And that's what these holiday figures are going to be for me. Um, I'm not going to get all of them. I got the clone trooper with the ugly sweater and the pork. Um, I'd love to get the pimp daddy trooper because he's painted up like Santa Claus, but he's a target exclusive. So he's sold out. I'll I'll get more. Um, but they're, they're going to go. Yeah. They're going to go in with Christmas decorations. They'll, they'll be special for the holiday season. Um, yeah. Yeah. These, uh, (laughs) (laughs) what do you think, Victoria? Oh man. I, I think they said it best in the panel on, the, the the Lucasfilm rep that they had there said that Hasbro had to work really hard to convince them that this is something they needed to do because they even they thought it was kind of a joke. 
Yeah. Now, the company that makes a TV show about a 50-year-old green elf child thought that <laughs> these were not they, that they couldn't take these seriously. <laughs> and I guess that's when they added in the buddies to the figures and that's what that's what finally sold them. But I just I it, like the Star Wars figures are not they're not immune from having ridiculous holiday ones. I think there's a holiday Darth Vader out there that's like red. Yeah, I have and, it. Yeah, and there's there's a set of uh, Jawas that come with Christmas presents. Like Yeah, I, yeah. You know, I if you're like me and you're really wondering why I don't have fives and echo in the Black series yet, this sort of thing would be is frustrating. But these are silly they're silly holiday decorations. They're things you you sneak around your house for the holiday season and it goes in in the bin with all the Christmas Christmas ornaments after that. Um, that's why I these these put a big stupid smile on my face. Uh, if you watch the the panel, you saw that one of the the team members, Vicky, was just laughing her butt off through the entire thing um, because these are they're just silly. They're silly things. They're intentionally silly. I get a real kick out of silly stuff sometimes. Yeah, I do too. But I don't know. I just feel like this is a bit much. <laughs> um, like, yeah, they, they did do three and three quarter inch ones, you know, a long time ago. But they were like, it was like one every year. And, and they were like, they were exclusive to different like online retailers or right. different, you know, things, different things. Um, and, you know, they didn't make a big stink about them. They were just like, okay, here you go. Mm-hmm. Like, like, <laughs> like these, these, these are a concerted effort to sneak into the holiday sections at, Pretty much every like retailer you're going to buy from over the holidays, um, Target, Walmart, Best Buy, Amazon, uh, GameStop. I don't know. I pre-ordered most of them. Best Buy didn't put theirs up. <laughs> I know. Yes, laugh. <laughs> Best Buy didn't put theirs put, didn't put theirs up yet. Uh, well, last night they hadn't. Um, and Target's, like you said, was pre-sold out. You know, we, we know we'll get more of them because they they right. had even like some of the Galaxy's Edge yesterday in stock. Which one is um, Best Buy's one? Best Buys, I think, is the Sith Trooper. So, yeah, I ordered what I was able to, but uh, I'm, I'll be honest with you, uh, Tom, I, I think I might be canceling them because I'm just, you know, the more I think it over, like, yeah, they're ridiculous. And would they be fun to have on some level? Yes, I guess so. You know, just for the stupidity of the whole thing. But at the same time, it's kind of like, well, I don't have a ton of room. Not that that right. usually stops me, but it's like, do I buy two sets? Like, do I, do I have to get a set to open as well? No. Do I, you know, I don't know. Like, it, but you know, that's what my collector mind starts, you know, going to. And it's kind of like, well, if I just avoid them all together, I'm going to save like a lot of money. So. You're going to save a lot of money if you avoid them all. And they're, they're totally unnecessary things. Again, I, I'm just going to keep them out for uh, the holiday season and into the, the storage lock and they'll go for the rest of the year. Um, so that's, yeah. that's it for me. They're basically Christmas decorations. Yeah, and if you're not into, yeah, if you're if you're really like eh, I don't really know, I, I would I would pass on them, like yeah. With with these things, you know, the other nice thing about three and three quarter inch figures is so much easier to collect them because they're so much smaller. These black series ones, this is kind of why I started to get more pick and choosy about them. They're big, they take up a lot of space, they're great, but like, if if I'm not. If I'm not excited about it, if I'm not like, oh my god, yeah, that's great, then these days I'm probably going to take a pass. Um, that said, I'm pretty easy to get excited about these things, so, you know. Yeah, so you pre-ordered all of them? No, no, I, I pre-ordered uh, the Clone Trooper with the ugly sweater, and I just pre-ordered the Sith Trooper with Babu Frick, um, because he also comes with a ridiculous scarf from the Lando Calrissian uh, solo action figure. And yeah. I think that that is hilarious. Um, he looks wonderfully ridiculous. Like it, it's it's such a it's so absurd. It's yeah. so silly and absurd that I yeah. And I want to get the uh, the pimp the pimp trooper one that looks like Santa. Yeah, like, well, I really thought these were going to be a joke. Um, <laughs> and, and, and it's they are. They, and uh, yeah, they are. And they are mix and match. Like they come with accessories that are completely unrelated and are painted mm-hmm. in candy cane colors and yeah. clear ice translucent colors. <laughs> and the buddies don't look anything like their film counterparts because they're painted like like the porgs are painted like penguins. And they got they and... got scarves on. They're porgs with scarves. Yeah. yeah <laughs> It's too much, Tom. It's too much. <laughs> um, 
Yeah. Outside of Jar Jar, this is what I was most excited about yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> They're so dumb. They're so dumb. Uh, yeah, so no, it's uh, it's interesting. You know, a lot of people are going to you know, buy them. A lot of people are going to pass on them, you know. So we'll we'll see what happens. We'll see how they actually do, you know, once it's all said and done. But um, right. uh, yeah, let's go to move on because I think, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we have another lightsaber coming, don't we? Yes, Ahsoka's lightsaber. Yeah, they're uh, they're they're ramping up on these elite lightsabers. So these are the more expensive price point, two hundred fifty dollars, um, and they're they vary. Like Kylo's is three hundred. You know, some of right. them are more, some are less. So this one is really exciting. I think it looks awesome. the The quality of the hilt, at least in the photos, looks awesome. But it's kind of strange that you know Ahsoka is famous for having two sabers. Like this mm-hmm. is just one saber. Well, it's like the best been playset. You just got to buy two. Well, they're different. Is the thing one's like the Shoto saber. It's a different hilt. So right, yeah. I would have preferred they would have done like you know charge us three hundred fifty bucks and give us both. You know. Yeah, that that probably would have been the better way to go. It's cool though that these ones. Um, this one has like a you can change the color of it. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's I don't the know elite. if it's because you. Yeah, that's. I mean, that's 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 a pretty neat thing. Again, I'm I I don't collect these. The one I was tempted to get was Darth Sidious's, but passed. Um, but I mean, Ahsoka's such a great character. It's it's awesome that they're releasing her lightsaber. Yeah, but Galaxy's yeah, should... Edge. Galaxy's Edge is going to uh, recently announce that they're going to be selling uh, these two lightsabers as well. They give you both of them though. So. Oh, cool. <laughs> well, that's that's the better deal. Well, the tech isn't as good as as in these elite sabers, though. Mm, so gotcha. it's more of right. it's more like straight up force effects, you know, just like basic. Yeah. Okay. Um. But um. Yeah. No, it looks cool. I, I pre-ordered it because you know it's Ahsoka, and mm-hmm. you know. Do you do you have other other lightsabers? Other FX lightsabers? I've been buying force effects since like 2005. That's mm. when I started collecting them, and I I pretty much had all of them. Went back when Master Master Replicas was doing them. Uh-huh. I pretty much got all of them, but then you know, like over time, like I I would sell them, and you know, like you know, the aftermarket values for a while were crazy on some of them. Some of them are going for close to a thousand dollars. Yeah. Like, and you know, Hasbro's been like steadily re releasing them over the past you know few years, and. Um, you know, now they have the elite sabers, which I don't have any of the elites yet. I wanted to get Kylo's, but I'm just really hesitant to pay $300 for something like that. Mm-hmm. Especially when I already have the previous Kylo Ren force effects. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, I pick it these days. I kind of pick and choose if it's a re-release of something I may have had at one point, but then sold. then you know, if it's something I really like, yeah, I'll, like Kid Fisto's or Count Dooku's, you know, I never mm-hmm. had Dooku's actually, but, um, yeah, stuff like that's really cool. And, you know, I, I am happy to get that, but. This is, uh, I, I really thought they were going to do Ray's, you know, like Yellow Saber, but mm. um, maybe that next seems, time. Yeah, maybe next year. That seems like a, a no-brainer at this point. Yeah, so no, really cool. I don't, uh, you know, it's cool to see these lightsabers. Obviously, people are buying them, otherwise they wouldn't be making so many of them. Mm-hmm. Um, all right, which brings us to the last thing that was talked about. The last thing that we were all waiting for and hoping for. The galaxies, the, the Galaxy of Adventures figures. The galaxy. <laughs> what happened to those? What Maybe they got put. They they got put into the vault, like the five POA figures. Oh gosh, you know, <laughs> I was I was actually really looking forward to the Ahsoka one. So I don't know if that's going to happen or not anymore. But oh, um, didn't that come out? No, it never came out. Oh, um, oh shit. In 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 the UK, and actually, I did order this the uh, like a couple weeks ago from Amazon UK. I, I was able to order Boba Fett and and um, hmm. Yoda. Mm-hmm. So those are on the way from the UK. And, you know, I mean, I wasn't ever like a huge, huge fan of this line. I thought they were pretty decent. Mm-hmm. Um, but, I, you know, Boba Fett was one I really wanted. And, you know, I was like, they're, well, if I'm going to order Boba Fett, I'm going to order Yoda too because they got both. So They're cool designs. They're cool designs. Yeah. It just, you know, it's I guess it didn't do what they were hoping it was going to do. But uh, Mission Fleet seems to be doing pretty well from them from what it sounded like. Yeah, cool. And um, I have a couple, I have a few of those. Um, including the Mandalorian with the speeder bike and the child. Mm. I haven't opened it yet, but uh, it's interesting to learn that Mark Bridger also did, you know, that was another Millennium Falcon that he did was the Mission Fleet one, so I kind of feel like I need it now. Of that. Yeah. I mean, the Millennium Falcon does look look pretty cool. Also, the fun thing about the Mandalorian with the, the baby Yoda, um, like, he comes with the little, what is it called, a prim? The prim. The Prem, yeah, like, and that works for your. Would I think it works for your Black Series one as well? I yeah. saw someone uh, uh, post post that. That Baby Yoda is still too small. 
the black oh, series it? one. And, well, the vintage, co- the yeah, the mission fleet's too big for vintage collection, and the black series is too small for black series. Like I think I posted the measurements because I did the math on them and like yeah, mm. so uh, yeah, hopefully they fix that someday, but probably not anytime soon. Right. Um, but I derailed you about what you really wanted to talk about. Yeah, what we really want to talk about. Your favorite uh, Star Wars property has a HasLab coming to it. And, you know, there was a lot of speculation for for a while as to what it was going to be. I thought they were going to do the Death Star. I just felt like that made the most sense. Like, going back to what they did with the Katana, I just kind of felt like, you know, that would have been along the lines of the Katana, sort of. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, you know, a lot of people were saying, oh, hopefully it's going to be something Cantina related, like a, like a full-size Mos Eisley Cantina, like sculpted in plastic. And that would have been awesome. <laughs> that would be awesome. But I... I, I still think the canteen is best done the way they're doing these uh, modular play sets. Yeah, I, I tend to agree, yeah. So. And also at this point, I think that's probably the best the best way to get Death Star stuff out there. Um, that would, yeah. that would, at this point, that would be my pick. You could have, a, you know, the little the little room, the little red room with the buttons is one. You could have the Emperor's Throne room is another one. Um, the Emperor's Throne room would probably be pretty big, but yeah. I don't know. Maybe, maybe the best in thing is sort of a test run to that kind of a... I, I'm kind of an idea. You but would have to come with the vault. The vault. What's the vault? From Rise of Skywalker, the Emperor's Vault. Oh right, yes, the Emperor's Vault. Uh, yes, yes, it would need to come with that, and a wayfinder. And a wayfinder. <laughs> we still but, don't have a wayfinder accessory. It's a ho- it's a holocron, right? Uh, it's a wayfinder, but yeah, <laughs> kind of. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, all right, so let's talk about the actual HasLab. So, uh, the HasLab, we were, you know, and this was speculated on, you know, and, I, you know, the, the price point had even been thrown around online. Mm-hmm. Um, but, all right, so we're getting the, the Razor Crest from the Mandalorian, you know, the current mm-hmm. entertainment, the Mandalorian, mm-hmm. which, you know, highly successful. Mm-hmm. Uh, lots of people love it, except for Tom Schwartzen. I'm, and, I'm, um, I'm, I'm alone there. <laughs> you're alone there you and your your holiday troopers <laughs> and um, that's what i want i want a series about the holiday troopers they're just they're just they're just they're just getting drunk at a bar they're home for the holidays and they're like Arr! yeah off, off, off of eggnog and, yeah. yeah yeah razor crest eggnog and candy canes yeah <laughs> razor crest razor crest so all right so this is the Haslab. it retails for 350 dollars that's the uh the, that's the, the the going rate, you know, if you want to back the Razor Crest, and um, yeah, so you know, I don't think this is the worst choice. I was kind of thinking it was going to be a mass release like item. Um, right. What's interesting, I thought it, about the price point is that it's cheaper than the Galaxy's Edge Millennium Falcon, which isn't a Haslab, right? Um, but it is cheaper also than um, the Katana by a mm-hmm. good bit. So um, it's, it doesn't look like it's going to be as big. They gave us the measurements. Uh, I was looking at my shelves last night and measuring them, and you know my shelves—they're um, the perfect height and the perfect length, but they're not going to be wide enough, unfortunately, for the mm. Razor Crest. Right. Um, yeah. So, yeah. What do you think? I think that this—I think they knocked it out of the park with this. I think this was the smartest choice. <laughs> um, like you, I'm disappointed it's not a a more mass release sort of thing. Um, but this is, I, I used it, I said this before, but this is striking while the iron's hot. Um, Mandalorian is big right now. People love it. And this is, it's a great ship. It's a really cool ship. Um, I wish that it was a smaller thing that was more mass retail for maybe the $200 price point. Something like, um, in the scale of the, the Republic gunship. I honestly think for this kind of thing, that's really all you need. Um, but this one is a, it's a it's big. It's th- what thirty inches long and twenty inches wide. Um, so I think for fans of this property, this is and, and you know three hundred fifty bucks. That's a lot of money, but that's also what the Sentinel went for for the Marvel the Marvel Legends Sentinel, and uh-huh. that blew past its its goal in a day. I think, um, uh-huh. and it. it the current rate, the Razor Crest is, I mean, it's it's almost five thousand backers now. It needs six thousand. Um, yeah. I think this is a great choice. Um, and looking at all the images of it, all the detail that's going into it, uh, it's it's incredibly cool. While it's not for me, like I'm I'm not going to spend that money 
unless it's a thing that I've wanted for 30 years, right? That's that's the katana. That would be the Death Star if they came out with that. That's, you know, Snake Mountain for the Masters of the Universe classics. That For this, this, this price point, it needs to have been a long time wanted item. Uh-huh. But, but this is, an, this is, you know, it's going to be a centerpiece for so many people, like new people collecting, just getting into Star Wars because they're excited about the Mandalorian, right? Like, this will be a centerpiece yeah. for their collection. It's it's yeah. amazing. They, they're it's it's incredibly cool. It's incredibly cool. Yeah. No, I think if if this was the only way to do the Razor Crest through Haslab, then yeah, I think this was the right choice. Um, and like you said, it looks fantastic. We've only seen like the uh, the renderings that they've that they've shown us of you know the actual like I don't know if they have a three D like model of it yet. I assume they do, but. Um, they just, they, they've shown us, you know, it's kind of like the cell barge at the time, you know, they showed us like unpainted, like renderings of, you know, what that mm-hmm. was going to look like. And you know, it looks really cool. It even has the, the space toilet in there. Yeah, I know. That's, that's just too <laughs> funny. Uh, the fact that they've, they put that in, that's hilarious. They call it a refresher, right? To, a you know, refresher, clever yeah. enough name. Yeah. I mean, this is, I mean, we've seen what, what they did with the, the sail barge. The sail barge is, was worth every penny of it. Um, so fans of, of this kind of thing, yeah, I, I think that this should have been a more mass release kind of thing. Um, yeah. But these days, the way the toy market is going, it's sort of sneaking towards being a pre-order kind of situation. It's made made to buy, you know, made to uh, made to order right. sort of stuff. Um, yeah. And, and if like... that's the if that's the way things are now, that's how like that's how the Masters of the Universe classics have been for about a decade. Um, Super Seven does that with all their stuff. Um, mm-hmm. You know, you're not yeah. going to be able to get this on on sale on discount for a hundred bucks. No, maybe that's true. And uh, I mean, yeah, that's the thing. Like, even if it, for it to be mass release, you'd have to have you know these major retailers committing to large footprints yeah. of space in the toy aisle for something like this at a huge price point that you know probably a lot, not a lot of people are able to afford. Right. Um, so, you know, this makes sense. Um, mm-hmm. and it's not a repaint of something like the Falcon, which, you know, easy to right. repaint, retool, you know, the Millennium Falcon and send that, you know, as an exclusive, but this is, this is something that's, you know, all new, you know, mm-hmm. they would never be able to do it probably without the crowdfunding, I suppose, if they, you know, at this price point. Um, so or they don't, they're, they're, they're risk averse at this point, right? Like, yeah, we, we know that Hasbro Star Wars team is very, very risk averse. Um, right. hence all the repacks of, you know questionable repacks but that said this is you know this is the way to do something like that at this point um i'm i'm yeah. a, i'm a fan of the pre-order system for uh, uh toy purchases anyway I, I find it much less stressful um it's you know it's it's all right i'm i'll, I'll pay for it now and I'll, I'll get it in a year i don't have to worry about it i don't have to think about it it'll show yeah. up when it shows up um, yeah, no, and, if it looks... it's like, and if it's like the sail barge, you know that that's that's the, the, the top thing in my collection. I'm nuts about the sail barge. Um, yeah, I can't wait to see like what the uh, what the the, the 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 side engines are going to look like when like those pieces are in because those are so cool looking in the um, in the show, right? They're like they like the, 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 that really cool glow. Like how yeah. will they do that? I wish they would have like light ups inside there for it um i don't think they're going to but no man. no it'll be like the barge you know just no electronics just straight up you know highly detailed mm-hmm. you know adult collector piece yeah uh serious collect serious adult collector piece you know yeah that, um it's gorgeous it, it is gorgeous. gorgeous and i'm sure what i'm wondering is is it going to be like vac metal or is it going to be like you know because i mean it's they don't really do vac metal but at the same time you know no. this is a hazlab like Will they make nah. an exception? Like, who knows? It won't be vac metal. Um, it, but yeah. it'll be. It'll. I'm. I'm imagining the paint job on it. It'll be beautiful. Uh, yeah. I I'm envy sure everyone that's getting it. Yeah, I'm sure it will. I. I back this. I want. I want to get it. You know, it's. It's something that. You know, it's huge, but. Um, you know, it's something I just. You know, I, I. Even if I can't display it like right away or whatever, you know, it's. It's something that I want to have. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know it's special. It's the Mandalorian. I love the Mandalorian. And yeah. um, one thing that was pretty cool that they said is um, so this is going to come with a uh, Mandalorian figure in Beskar armor. Yep. Um, but that later they're going to issue this figure in, in the main line with um, instead of Softkit's cape, though he's going to have a plastic cape. Yeah. And they what was what was really cool is that they said that if this this gets funded, which you know it will, 
that they will design a, a wave of Mandalorian. All, all the characters that could possibly interact with this vehicle will be in the line by the time that, um, you know, this is a, is ready in, in a year, a year from now. That's pretty um, fun. That's pretty I mean, fun. So I mean, that this means... is this is getting this is getting back today. Yeah. This, oh yeah. This will be this will be back today, and it'll probably be at eight thousand backers tomorrow. Yeah, we're gonna hit those stretch goals. There's two stretch goals, which the barge didn't have stretch goals, but the barge had a harder time. It took it took like months for it to to get funded. Yep. This this uh, I think they're they're figuring out what the what the sweet spot is in terms of price point. You know. Yeah. Three hundred fifty bucks is is you can you can people can do that. Over yeah, that, five, for whatever reason, it's just like, hmm, I don't know. 500 is like a m- month's worth of rent in a lot of places. So, um, no, like, yeah, so this is this is, uh, this is is good. And uh, they didn't really say what the stretch goals were going to be. They said it would be something on the, along the lines of what they did with the um, Yak Face in the, in the previous, uh, the Katana. Yeah. Um, so... I uh, I hope that I hope that they do include a carded figure, a unique like card, like like they did with Yak Face. Yeah, but, that's I I would I would hope that the Mandalorian will come on a Power of the Force card, because uh, that's what Yak Face came with, right? And didn't he doesn't he come with the little coin? Yeah. Like they should they should totally do that for this, because that's like like I'm I'm such a soft goods fan, like I would almost be in for this for to get a, a Mandalorian figure with soft goods cape. Um, yeah, that's the only I mean, thing, though. If, if if that's what they do, then you know you're going to have to open that figure to get him out with the soft goods, you know. And I don't think people are going to want to do that. So, I would hope uh, that right. I would hope that maybe you get two. Maybe one's already loose, you know, and one's on the card. Or if they want to make it even more unique, uh, maybe they card like Mando when he's kind of in between, when he just has like that one like Beskar pauldron, you know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Maybe that's the carded figure that it comes with. Jeez, I didn't think about that. Yeah, but um, I don't know. I just hope it's uh, something unique. Yeah. There's two stretch goals, and I'm sure they're going to hit both of them most likely. Oh yeah, so, <laughs> easy. This is like the this is like the most popular pop culture entertainment thing right now out there. The Mandalorian. Yeah. Which is awesome. Yeah. Um, I love that. To some level, Star Wars is coming back out on top uh, again with with something. Um. Uh, yeah, this is this thing is just it's incredibly incredibly cool. Everything about it's amazing. Yeah, yeah. No, it's I'm excited. I think this is going to be fun, and I'm, I'm I am glad though that I have a year to prepare for it. So. <laughs> yeah, that's that's the other thing about these giant things. It's like, you know, you start to be like, well, what do I have space for? Right. You know, like I've yeah. got the katana. <laughs> that's. I was sort of dreading. Oh, I hope it's not the Death Star. Because I'm going to buy the Death Star, but where's that going to go? Not yeah, in this apartment. Where's it going to go? Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, really cool stuff. And um, yeah, no, I'm stoked. A lot of people seem to be excited about it. And yeah, you're, you're right. It's totally going to get funded real, really soon here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's, 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 this is one of the ones that had been rumored that made the most sense. Um, also, if you recall, we had a conversation with... Um, I believe his name is Sam, back at Toy Fair, back before the in the before times. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I love Sam. And we asked about uh, um, you know the Mandalorian, the, the 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 Razor Crest, and he said, "Well, geez, I don't know, man. If we were to do that, that that thing scales up. It's almost the size of a sail barge." And I was like, "Really? That seems crazy." And now it's now it seems evident that that was just being like, "It's going to be a Haslab, guys." I uh-huh. think that was sort of a sneaky hint about that. Um, yeah, yeah, no, that's, yeah, that's true. I thought about that as well. Like, he said, oh, if we did it, you know, to scale, it would be bigger than the barge. Right. So, I mean, it seemed like they were obviously doing the math on it at that point, you know. Mm-hmm. So, um, obviously, you know, like like anything in the vintage collection or through the corner scale, you know, they have to um, proportion it to, to make it into something that people can actually buy and own. Right. So... Um, yeah, no, you're right. They they were probably already thinking about it at that point. And um, yeah, no, this is this is cool. This is cool. I'm excited. And um, you know, Black Series collectors will probably have to wait until next time to get uh, their first Haslab. <laughs> well, what would you want for a Black Series Haslab? Nothing. Yeah. Like, I, mean, I, I guess. I mean, like uh, we've got the giant Tie Fighter, right? I guess it would be cool to have an X-wing, but you're not. You know, the Tie Fighter. 
you buy it for 150 bucks initially, so you're not going to get me to spend $350 on an X-Wing. Um, it it would be the X-wing. I'm sure it would. They they yeah. they told they, they told up the X-wing. They have they have the X-wing. That was supposed to be like mass release and they never did it because of the performance of the tie fighter. Oh, really? So, I didn't know that. Yeah. Uh, that's probably what it would be. I mean, it's already ready to go. They would just need to get it funded, but yeah. I I don't I don't think I would buy that to be honest. Like I'm I'm all in on uh, as you know on all this stuff, but Yeah. Something like that, like the tie fighter is just in its box like collecting dust in the closet because I don't have anywhere to put it. Yeah, mine's in, um, uh, mine's in my storage unit. Yeah, and like an next thing would be a lot harder to display without hanging it up, you know, from the ceiling. Right, so. yeah. I, I wanted to, I was excited I was able to get the uh, TIE Fighter on a discount. It wasn't the crazy discount some people got, but I think I got it for 90 bucks. Um, I, I'm all in on uh, TIE Fighters. I love TIE Fighters, so that was one that was like, I want to have it because I think in a number of years... That'll be looked at as like a really weird, huh, really peculiar that they made that kind of a thing. Um, and I'll be happy to own it at that point. I mean, I, I used to have it displayed in, in an office where I worked um, until we kind of downsized the office. Um, and it was great there. I mean, you know, if you've got the space to display it, it's freaking yeah. cool. But yeah, yeah you no, know, for sure. So, so the sizes on these things are, are problematic. And I think Black Series, if you're going to get, you know, I don't have the Snow Speeder. Um, I you know you you can't make an Atat of that scale. You can't make the Falcon, right? As you said, the X Wing would be kind of weird to display. So yeah. Anyway, that's where the vintage collection is always going to come out on top. That you can you can make vehicles scaled to some level or other for three yeah. and three quarter inch figures, and that's why they made the three and three quarter inch figure line in the first place for the original yeah. Star Wars, so that you could. They wanted to sell the ships. They were hoping to sell the ships. So here's a little cheap $2 figure you can put in the ship. And then it just, the figures took over. Yeah, yeah, totally. The world building is, is uh, you know, it's, it's always been with three and three quarter. And that's that's going to continue to be the case because, you know, it's, yep. it's the only where, place that it's feasible to do that. You know, you can't. Right. So. Yeah. But yeah, no, cool stuff. Uh, a lot of stuff that was, um, I, I, went, I was going to say announced, but kind of more confirmed than announced. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, you know, the surprises, you know, being the, the repacks of things nobody asked for. That's why they were surprises. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, mixed bag. Uh, I'm, I'm excited about a lot of the stuff that's coming, particularly the newer uh, stuff based on the Mandalorian and, mm-hmm. you know, the you know, that sort of stuff. But, um, yeah, no, it's, it's interesting stuff. And um, it'll be interesting to see you know how all the stuff um how all these repacks perform and you know you know so i i hope the vintage collection ones don't accidentally find their way out onto retailer shelves and not (laughs) clog the clog the pegs for anything else you know for the next year um but i kind of think they will that would be the fourth time in a row that that accidentally happens it's a little odd yeah it's it's a little odd but yeah, no, uh, lots of stuff. And, uh, you know, as always, Tom, it's been a pleasure. Any, any final thoughts you have here before we part? No, I, I, this one is, it's, while it's a mixed bag, I think we both found stuff in it that we're excited to get. And, you know, these days, it's probably better for me to not be excited about everything. <laughs> There's limited space. Yeah, limited space. But I, I always ask that question after I buy something. Like, where am I going to put it? Like, yep. I hope. It's like Han says, you know, I never ask that question until after I've done it. Like, exactly. That's how, how I feel with storage. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, you know, it's it's for me, it's just become a little bit of rotating displays. And yeah. that's fun. Because then yeah, I get yeah, to redisplay here. my figures, which is just my way of saying I play yeah, with the I figures. Mean, <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, exactly, right? I mean, you got to dust the shelves, right? So that's a perfect time to get in there and, you know, rearrange things, put some mm-hmm. new stuff up. And yeah, yeah. fun. It's fun. Exactly what I do. But, no, it's been a blast, Tom, as always. Thank you for uh, reacting and uh, going over in detail these uh, new products that are going to be coming from Hasbro Star Wars. And uh, where can our listeners go to find you online? Uh, you can hunt me up on Twitter. I'm Woozlin Demon, um, And I don't really do Instagram much, so it's probably not worth hunting me up there. But I'm there, too. But you're there, too. And I'm sure you'll be there enjoying your holiday troopers once those hit in December. <laughs> <laughs> they're just they're, they're so delightfully stupid <laughs> i mean they're, they're oh my goodness yeah <laughs> i'm just i'm gonna put hooks on them and i'm gonna hang them up from my tree probably that's probably legitimately what i'm gonna do <laughs> yeah i can see you doing that <laughs> all yeah, right victoria this to. is pleasure as always
<laughs> All right, Tom, take care. All right, cheers. And that's a wrap for this episode. Victoria's Cantina began on YouTube, and you can find plenty of toy content on the Victoria's Cantina YouTube channel. We are also on Instagram, constantly showcasing toy photography at Victoria's Cantina, as well as Facebook at Victoria's Cantina, and on Twitter, ranting and raving about toys and other nonsense at Vic's Cantina. For fun and random toy clips, follow us on TikTok at Victoria's Cantina. Got a question or something you'd like to share with us? Drop us a line in the fax machine. You can email victoriascantina at yahoo.com. If you are so inclined and wish to drop a coin in the tip jar, we are on Patreon, where you can gain greater access to the channel while helping to keep the content rolling. For VC branded merchandise such as t-shirts, ball caps, mugs, and other fun stuff, visit us on Teespring and TeePublic. Links to all of these magical places can be found in the show notes. Do you've had a minute or two? If you are listening on Apple Podcasts, please leave us a five-star rating and drop a brief review explaining why you enjoy the show. As always, I'm Victoria, and no matter where you're listening out in the galaxy, I'd like to thank you for tuning in to the Cantina Chatter Podcast. <laughs>